Hello and welcome back everyone. Today I'd like to start by posing a question to you. What if it was a way to learn things faster, remember them longer, and actually enjoy the process? We often think learning is about how hard we try or how smart we are, but the truth is effective learning is all about using strategies that align with how our brains actually work. Learning is a fundamental aspect of our lives. It shapes who we are and opens doors to endless possibilities. But have you ever wondered why some people seem to grasp new concepts effortlessly, while others struggle to keep up? The secret lies not just in what we learn, but in how we learn. That's what effective learning is. It's the bridge between ambition and achievement, the key that unlocks the full potential of our intelligence. In this video, I want to explore the pillars of effective learning, from understanding the psychological foundations that drive us, to adopting strategies that can significantly boost our learning efficiency. I want to dissect the science behind learning, introduce you to two new techniques that can, you can apply right away, and share insights on overcoming common challenges. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid foundation to transform the way you learn. So if you're ready to change the way you think about learning, stick around. Learning effectively is a journey, and I want to help you every step of the way. Let's get started. Now that we're on our journey to understanding effective learning, let's start with the basics. What exactly is learning? It may seem like a simple question, but the answer is actually beautifully complex. At its core, learning is the process through which we acquire new knowledge or skills through experience, study, or being taught. It's how we make sense of the world around us, adapt to new situations, and grow both personally and professionally. When we learn, our brain's neural connections become stronger and more efficient. The biological transformation is the essence of learning, and it happens every time we're exposed to something new, whether it's a fact, a skill, or a perspective. But here's where it gets interesting. Not all learning is created equal. Ever crammed for a test only to forget everything a week later? That's learning, sure, but it's hardly effective. Effective learning isn't just about absorbing information. It's about making that knowledge stick, being able to apply it in different contexts, and growing from the experience. Effective learning goes beyond memorizing facts. It's about understanding concepts, connecting them to, with what we already know, and adapting this knowledge to navigate the world around us. So as we move deeper into the mysteries of effective learning, remember we're not just aiming to fill our heads with information. The goal is to build a ladder of knowledge, one that can be climbed to reach our dreams and goals. Ready to see how it's done? Let's move on to understanding why effective learning is so crucial in our lives. Now that we've explored what learning is, let's dive into why effective learning is not just beneficial, but essential. And why does it matter so much? The world we live in is constantly evolving faster than ever. New technologies, shifting job markets and global challenges demand not just knowledge, but the ability to adapt, innovate and solve problems. Effective learning helps us equip us with those tools we need to navigate this complexity. It's not just about gaining knowledge, it's about understanding how we to use that knowledge creatively and critically. Think about the professionals who stay ahead in their careers, the students who excel in their studies, or the artists who continually innovate. What they have in common is a mastery of effective learning. They know how to learn, adapt, and apply their knowledge in diverse ways. But effective learning is not a one-size-fits-all process. It, it's personal. It involves understanding your own brain, how it works best, and tailoring your learning strategies to fit. This personalized approach not only makes learning more enjoyable, but also more successful. And the importance of effective learning goes beyond personal success. It's also about contributing to our communities and the world at large. When we learn effectively, we're better equipped to solve the complex problems facing our society, innovate for the future, and share our knowledge with others. Remember, it's not just about achieving our personal or professional goals. It's about empowering ourselves to make a positive impact on the world around us. Let's dive deep into the heart of what transforms ordinary learning into a powerful journey of discovery, active engagement. This is a fundamental process on how we approach learning. It's about shifting from passively receiving information to actively participating in your own education. Think about it this way. Active engagement is the difference between watching the waves from the shore and diving into the ocean to feel the current against your skin. It's immersive, interactive, and deeply personal. 
This approach compels you to question, to challenge, and to connect with the material on a level that mere observation can never achieve. So how do we implement this? It starts with curiosity. Ask questions, not just any questions, but those that challenge the material, your understanding, and even the perspectives of others. Engage in discussions, whether in a classroom setting, online forums, or study groups. The goal is not just to seek answers, but to explore the landscape of ideas and perspectives that surround a topic. Then there's the power of active note-taking. This isn't about copying text straight from the textbook, but about recording the information in a way that makes sense to you. Use diagrams, make connections to what you already know, or even rewrite concepts in your own words. The act of reinterpreting information makes it inherently more memorable. And let's not overlook the role of teaching others. There's a reason they say teaching is the best way to learn. When you attempt to explain a concept to someone else, you're forced to understand it at a deeper level, to fill in any gaps in your own knowledge, and to present in a coherent, understandable manner. It's active engagement at its best. The essence of active engagement lies in making your learning process an active endeavor rather than a passive one. It's about engaging with the material, the instructor, and your peers in a way that stimulates thought, provokes questions, and promotes a deeper understanding on the subject matter. So I encourage you to dive in, be curious, be questioning, and be actively involved in your learning journey. The path to understanding is not a spectator sport, it's an immersive, interactive, and profoundly personal experience. Moving on to the next chapter of our journey towards mastering effective learning is unpacking the essential duo of practice and repetition. This Laurel and Hardy duo is far more than just a repetitive drill. It's the art of refining and embedding knowledge through consistent, deliberate application. Imagine practice as the brushstroke of a painter. Each movement contributes to the masterpiece of understanding. It's not merely about going through the motions, but engaging deeper with the material, applying it in various contexts, and continuously challenging your grasp of the subject. This is where the magic of practice comes alive, transforming raw information into nuanced understanding. Repetition, on the other hand, is not about mindless repetition, but strategic reinforcement. Think of it as the rhythm in a song that beats that give the music its structure and memorability. Through spaced repetition, a technique that involves reviewing material over increasing intervals of time, we leverage the psychological spacing effect to enhance long-term retention. It's a method that has been proven by cognitive science to solidify knowledge in our memory. But how do you keep practice and repetition from becoming tedious? Variety is a spice of life, and it's also the key to effective learning. When you switch up your methods of review, apply concepts in new ways, and challenge yourself with different types of problems, you're not only keeping the learning process fresh and engaging, but you're also deepening your understanding of the material. Here's a few ways to add variety to your learning. Study in different locations. A change of scenery can help you focus and retain information. Try studying in the library, a coffee shop, or even outdoors. Use different learning materials. In addition to your actual textbooks, there are many other resources available to help you learn, such as online courses, videos, and podcasts. Try using a variety of materials to keep things interesting and to learn from different perspectives. Form a study group. Studying with others can help you stay motivated and accountable. You can also learn from each other and get different perspectives on the material. Take practice tests. Practice tests are a great way to assess your understanding of the material and to help you identify areas where you need more review. Teaching the material to someone else. Explaining a concept to someone else is a great way to test your understanding and to identify areas where you need more clarification. Use different techniques to memorize information. There are many different memorization techniques available, such as flashcards, mnemonic devices, and space repetition. Try using a variety of techniques to find the ones that work best for you. Take breaks. It's important to take breaks when you're studying so you can stay focused and avoid burnout. Get up move around, or take a few minutes to relax and clear your head. By adding variety to your learning, you can keep the process fresh and engaging, and you can deepen your understanding of the material. So next time you're studying, try something new and see how it goes. You can't forget the importance of feedback in this process. Feedback acts as a mirror to our learning, revealing gaps in our knowledge and guiding our practice. It's an essential component of effective repetition. 
ensuring that our efforts are correctly aligned for our learning goals. Quality engagement, not quantity of time, leads to effective practice. Embrace this powerful duo with enthusiasm and persistence. The journey of learning is a marathon, not a sprint, and it's the steady, paced, and thoughtful repetition of practice that will carry you across the finish line of mastery. As our quest for effective learning strategies progresses, we encounter a pivotal concept, feedback loops. These loops extend beyond merely receiving assessments of our performance. They involve incorporating that feedback into an ongoing cycle of improvement and growth. Feedback loops are the navigational tools that guide us through the learning process, helping us to adjust our course and enhance our understanding with each iteration. Imagine embarking on a journey without a phone or GPS. You might eventually reach your destination, sure, but think of the unnecessary detours and obstacles you'd encounter. Feedback serves as that compass, offering insights and directions to streamline our path towards knowledge mastery. Engaging with feedback effectively means embracing both the positive and the constructive. It's about sifting through observations, critiques and suggestions, identifying the most valuable pieces and applying them to improve our approach. This process transforms feedback from a mere commentary into a powerful catalyst for personal and academic growth. Creating a robust feedback loop is a critical aspect of continuous improvement and development. It involves actively seeking out feedback from various sources rather than passively waiting for it to come to you. By proactively requesting feedback, you can gather diverse perspectives and insights on your performance and understanding, which can help you identify areas for growth and improvement. There are actually several ways to actively seek out feedback. You can request feedback from your teachers, who are valuable sources of feedback as they have a comprehensive understanding of the subject matter and can provide insights into your strengths and weaknesses. It's wise to regularly schedule one-on-one meetings with your teachers to discuss your progress and seek feedback on your assignments, class participation and overall understanding. Solicit feedback from peers. Peers can provide valuable feedback from a different perspective. Engage in peer review sessions where you exchange feedback on assignments, projects, or presentations. Seek feedback from classmates who have different strengths and weaknesses, as this can provide a more comprehensive view of your performance. Conduct self-assessment. Self-assessment is a powerful tool for identifying areas for improvement. Regularly reflect on your performance, strengths, and weaknesses, and use self-assessment rubrics or checklists to evaluate your work and identify areas that need attention. Participate in surveys and assessments. Many organisations and institutions conduct surveys and assessments to gather feedback from participants. Actively participate in these surveys and assessments as they provide an opportunity to share your thoughts and opinions and contribute to the improvement of the programme or organisation and seek feedback from mentors or coaches. Mentors and coaches can provide valuable guidance and feedback based on their experience and expertise. Regularly schedule meetings with your mentors or coaches to discuss your goals, challenges and progress. Once you gather feedback from multiple sources, it's important to analyse and reflect on it. Identify common themes and patterns that emerge from the feedback and use this information to make informed decisions about your next steps. And then comes the crucial part, action. Feedback without action is like receiving directions without moving. Use the insights gained from feedback to make informed adjustments to your study habits, approaches to problem solving, and even your mindset towards learning. Remember, the effectiveness of a feedback loop is determined not just by the feedback itself, but by our response to it. It requires openness to change, a willingness to adapt, and a commitment to continuous improvement. You need to leverage feedback loops not just as a means of evaluation, but as a strategic tool for enhancement. By actively seeking, reflecting upon, and acting on feedback, we can accelerate our progress, refine our skills, and ultimately achieve a deeper and more meaningful understanding of our subjects. Moving forward on our journey to becoming more effective learners, let's turn our attention to a concept that's crucial for understanding how our brains handle information. Cognitive load theory. This theory breaks down the way we process information into three main types, intrinsic, extraneous, and germane cognitive load. Intrinsic load is the effort associated with a specific topic. 
is the complexity inherent in the material itself. Now, think of extraneous load as the way information is presented to us. If it's not well structured, it increases the mental effort required to understand the material, which isn't helpful for learning. Lastly, we have germane cognitive load, which refers to the effort we put into creating a permanent store of knowledge, or our long-term memory of the subject. Understanding these types of cognitive load will help design and choose learning experiences that optimize your own mental resources. For example, by minimizing extraneous load, we can focus more on processing the intrinsic load of the material, engage in activities that enhance germane load, leading to deeper understanding and retention. So, when you're learning something new, ask yourself, how complex is the material? Is the way it's being presented helpful or hindering my understanding? And what strategies can I use to better integrate that knowledge into my long-term memory? By being mindful of cognitive load, we can tailor our learning strategies to be more effective, making the most of our cognitive capacity without overwhelming it. Effective learning isn't just about working harder, it's about working smarter. Another pillar in the foundation of effective learning is the understanding the mindset with which we approach our educational endeavours. Enter the concepts of growth mindset and fixed mindset, pioneered by psychologist Carol Dweck. A fixed mindset is the belief that our abilities, intelligence, and talents are static traits. People with a fixed mindset might think I'm just not good at maths, viewing their capabilities in, as inherent and unchangeable. On the flip side, a growth mindset is based on the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed with effort, learning, and persistence. It's the idea that challenges and failures are opportunities for growth rather than signs of unintelligence. So why does this matter for effective learning? Because the mindset you adopt profoundly affects how you approach learning and failure. With a growth mindset, you're more likely to embrace challenges, persist through obstacles, learn from criticism, and find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. This approach will not only enhance your ability to learn, but also promotes resilience and creativity. So the next time you're faced with a difficult task or a setback, remember, it's not about proving how smart or talented you are. It's about embracing the opportunity to grow. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this experience? How can I improve? By fostering a growth mindset, we unlock our full potential as learners, allowing us to reach heights we might have thought were well out of reach. And while we're on the subject of the psychological aspect of effective learning, I want to touch on the critical role that motivation and emotion play in the learning process. It's fascinating how much our desire to learn and the feelings we associate with learning can affect our ability to absorb and retain information. Motivation, the driving force behind our actions, can significantly affect how effectively we learn. Intrinsic motivation, which comes from within, drives us to learn because we find the subject matter interesting or rewarding in itself. On the other hand, extrinsic motivation is driven by external rewards, like grades or approval. Now let's talk about emotion. Our emotional state can greatly influence our learning efficiency. Positive emotions, such as curiosity and excitement, can enhance our ability to understand and remember information by making us more receptive to learning. Conversely, negative emotions, like anxiety and boredom, can hinder our learning process by distracting us and reducing our capacity to concentrate. But here's the good news. We can cultivate positive emotional states and intrinsic motivation by connecting what we're learning to our interests, setting personal goals, and celebrating our progress. Additionally, creating a supportive learning environment that reduces stress and promotes curiosity can make a big difference in our emotional engagement with the material. The takeaway from this, effective learning isn't just a cognitive process, it's also an emotional one. By nurturing a positive emotional landscape and tapping into our intrinsic motivations, we can enhance our learning experience, making it not only more effective, but also more enjoyable. Keep this in mind as you approach your next learning challenge. How can you make it more interesting for yourself? How can you connect to, to your passions or goals? By answering these questions, you're not just learning more efficiently, you're also turning the journey of learning into a more rewarding experience. As we move into the realm of actionable strategies for effective learning, let's zero in on a vital component, active learning techniques. 
These are not just study habits, they are powerful tools that transform passive absorption of information into a dynamic, engaging, and deeply personal learning experience. First up, we have summarizing. Summarizing is not just about condensing information, it's an art. It forces you to distill what you've learned into its most essential elements, enhancing understanding and recall. The challenge here is to capture the essence of the information in your own words, which reinforces learning and aids memory. Next, we dive into questioning. This technique is all about curiosity, asking not just any questions, but those that delve deeper into the why and how of the subject matter. This method encourages you to think critically and engage actively with material, pushing beyond surface-level understanding. Another transformative technique is teaching others. They say if you really want to understand something, try teaching it to someone else. This approach solidifies your knowledge and uncovers any gaps in your understanding. It's a powerful way to reinforce what you've learned, making complex information more accessible and understandable for both you and your audience. And let's not overlook the role of discussions. Engaging in discussions, whether in study groups or online forums, exposes you to different viewpoints and interpretations. This diversity of thought can deepen your understanding and challenge you to defend your perspectives, refining your critical thinking skills. And finally, let's talk about practice problems. Tackling practice problems, especially those that stretch your abilities, is crucial. It's one thing to understand a concept in theory, it's another to apply it in practice. This technique enables you to bridge that gap, enhancing your problem-solving skills and reinforcing your learning. Engaging in active learning techniques can revolutionize your studies. These approaches transform you from a passive recipient of information into an active participant, forging a deep connection with the material. By actively engaging with the content, you build a solid foundation of knowledge and practical skills. Experiment with these techniques, discover what resonates with you, and witness the positive transformation of your learning journey, making it more effective, enjoyable, and empowering. Embrace active learning and unlock the full potential of your educational experience. In this digital age, leveraging technology in our learning process is not just an option, it's a necessity. The array of digital tools at our disposal has the power to transform mundane study routines into dynamic and interactive experiences. I want to briefly explore how we can utilize technology to supercharge our learning. The digital revolution has brought about a paradigm shift in the way we learn. Gone are the days where traditional textbooks and classroom lectures were the sole means of acquiring knowledge. Today, a diverse range of educational technologies offers limitless opportunities for learners of all ages and skill levels. Educational apps and websites are at the forefront of this transformation. These platforms provide a treasure trove of resources across all subjects and skill levels, from beginner to advanced. They employ interactive lessons, quizzes, and games to make learning more engaging and effective. Duolingo, Khan Academy, Coursera are just a few examples of these innovative platforms that bring subjects to life in a way traditional textbooks just can't. Podcasts and educational videos are another powerful tool for self-directed learning. Platforms like YouTube, TED Talks host a wealth of lectures and presentations from leading experts and educators. This format allows learners to delve deep into topics that interest them at their own pace and schedule. The key is to be selective and focus on high-quality content that truly enriches the learning experience. Virtual and augmented reality are revolutionizing the way we learn by creating immersive experiences that transport learners to other worlds or inside complex structures. Imagine exploring the ancient ruins of Pompeii through a VR headset or dissecting a virtual frog in a biology class. These technologies have the potential to make learning more interactive, memorable and accessible. Collaborative tools like Google Docs, Slack, Trello have transformed the way students work together on projects and assignments. These platforms facilitate seamless collaboration, regardless of physical distance. And by enabling real-time communication and sharing of resources, they have made group learning more efficient and more effective, fostering teamwork and communication skills. And finally, digital flashcards and space repetition software like Anki and Memrise are powerful tools for retaining information over time. These tools are based on cognitive science principles and optimize memory consolidation. By presenting flashcards at spaced intervals, Anki helps learners remember vast amounts of information more effectively. These educational technologies are not just tools. They are gateways to a world of knowledge and learning opportunities. 
By embracing these technologies, we can create a more engaging, effective, and personalized learning experience for everyone. Incorporating technology into your learning doesn't mean abandoning traditional methods. It's about enhancing them. It's about making learning more accessible, engaging, and tailored to your individual needs. So embrace these tools, experiment with what works for you, and make technology a powerful ally in your quest for knowledge. I just want to briefly dive into an aspect of effective learning that's as fundamental as it is often overlooked. The creation of a conducive study environment and the development of healthy study habits. Our physical and digital spaces, as well as our time management strategies, have a profound impact on our learning efficiency and overall success. Here's a quick detailed exploration of how we can optimise these aspects for a more effective and rewarding learning experience. Physical study environment. Choose a quiet, well-lit space dedicated solely to studying, free from distractions like TV, music or chatty roommates. Personalise the space with motivational quotes, artwork or plants that inspire you. Keep the area decluttered and organised to minimise visual distractions. And ensure the temperature and ventilation are comfortable, as physical discomfort can hinder focus. Digital space management. Use website blockers, browser extensions or apps that temporarily restrict access to distracting websites and social media during study sessions. Organize digital files and resources using folders, tags, or cloud-based file management systems. This will save time and frustration when searching for materials later. Use productivity tools and apps that help you plan, track, and manage your tasks and projects effectively. Effective time management. Follow the Pomodoro technique. Break study sessions into 25-minute intervals separated by short breaks. This technique helps maintain focus and prevents burnout. Create a weekly or monthly study schedule that outlines specific times and days dedicated to studying. Prioritize tasks based on their importance and urgency, and avoid overloading your schedule with too many commitments. Learn to say no to additional commitments if your schedule is already full. Self-care for optimal learning. Ensure adequate sleep, as sleep deprivation can impair cognitive function and learning ability. Eat a well-balanced diet, rich in nutrients, minerals, fats, carbs, and protein. Engage in physical regular activity to improve overall health and well-being, which can positively impact learning outcomes. Practice stress management techniques like meditation, deep breathing, or yoga to reduce anxiety and improve focus. Reflection and adaptation. Regularly reflect on your learning strategies and progress. What's working well? What could be improved? Be open to trying new techniques and adjusting your approach based on your experience and needs. Remember that learning is a dynamic process and what works best can change over time. By creating a study environment that promotes focus, adopting digital hygiene practices, managing time effectively, prioritizing self-care and embracing adaptability, you can set the stage for a successful and fulfilling learning journey. Your physical and digital spaces, as well as your time management habits, play a vital role in shaping your educational outcomes. So take charge of these aspects and watch as they transform your capacity to learn and achieve. Embarking on a learning journey is an exciting adventure, but it's not without its challenges. One of the first obstacles many of us face is identifying our personal learning styles. It's essential to understand that everyone processes information differently, and recognizing your unique approach to learning can significantly enhance your educational experience. Broadly speaking, personal learning styles can generally be categorized into visual, auditory, reading, writing, and kinesthetic. Visual learners understand and retain information better when it's presented in diagrams, charts, or videos. If you're an auditory learner, you might find you grasp concepts more effectively through lectures, discussions, or podcasts. Reading and writing learners thrive on interacting with the written word, finding success in making lists, reading textbooks, and writing notes. And finally, kinesthetic learners prefer a hands-on approach, learning best by doing, experiencing, and moving. Now, it's very important to note that there are very few people who revert neatly into just one category. Most of us are a mix, leaning towards one style but still benefiting from a blend of techniques. The key is experimentation. Try different methods of studying and note what feels most natural 
what improves your retention, and what makes learning more enjoyable. Understanding your learning style is not about limiting yourself to one method. It's about starting with what suits you best and then incorporating other techniques as needed. It's also about adapting. Your preferred learning style might change based on the subject matter or as you grow and evolve as a learner. So take time to reflect on your previous learning experiences. What has worked well for you, what hasn't. Consider experimenting with new strategies that align with your learning style. And don't be afraid to mix and match techniques. The goal is to make your learning as effective and enjoyable as possible. By identifying and embracing your personal learning style, you're taking a significant step towards becoming a more efficient and effective learner. This understanding will empower you to tailor your study techniques, making the most of your time and efforts as you pursue your educational goals. A common roadblock we encounter is information overload. It's the feeling of being swamped by too much data, too many facts and too many concepts, all demanding our attention and understanding. This can lead to frustration, confusing and a decrease in our ability to process and retain information. But there's not really much to fear. There are strategies to navigate through this deluge of data and emerge more knowledgeable and less overwhelmed on the other side. So first off, let's talk about prioritization. Not all information has the same level of importance or relevance to our learning objectives. Start by identifying the key concepts or skills you need to master and focus your efforts there. This means being selective about what you study and when, which can significantly reduce the feeling of being overwhelmed. Next, embrace the power of chunking. This technique involves breaking down information into smaller, more manageable pieces or chunks instead of trying to understand a whole chapter of a textbook in one go. Focus on one section at a time. This not only makes it easier to digest the material, but also helps in creating connections between concepts and enhancing your overall learning. Another effective strategy is summarization. By summarizing what you've learned in your own words, you're forced to distill the information to its most essential points, which helps in clarifying your understanding and reducing the cognitive load. This can be done through writing summaries, creating diagrams, or even teaching material to someone else. Remember the importance of taking breaks. Studies have shown that our brains can only focus effectively for a certain period before needing a rest. Incorporating short breaks into your study sessions can help prevent burnout and improve retention. This is where techniques like the Pomodoro technique come into play, where you study intensely for a set period, followed by a short break. Lastly, leverage technology to your advantage. As previously mentioned, use apps and tools designed to help manage and organize information. From note-taking apps that help you organize your thoughts to flashcard apps that make memorization more manageable, technology can be a powerful ally in combating information overload. This isn't about how much information you can cram into your brain in one sitting. It's about understanding, processing, and applying knowledge in meaningful ways. By prioritizing, chunking, summarizing, taking breaks, and using technology wisely, you can navigate the sea of information more effectively. It'll be easier to navigate the endless sea of information, making your learning both more manageable and more enjoyable. Confronting procrastination is like facing the final boss in your quest for effective learning. It's that persuasive habit of delaying what we need to do, often for things that bring us instant gratification, but ultimately leave us racing against time stressed and underprepared. But here's the good news. Like any adversary, procrastination can be overcome with the right strategies. Procrastination is a common challenge that can hinder academic success. Overcoming it requires a combination of practical strategies and a mindset shift. Set clear, achievable goals. When setting goals, make them specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Instead of vague goals like study more, define concrete tasks such as complete 100 flashcards by Friday. Breaking down larger goals into manageable chunks reduces overwhelm and makes progress visible. The Pomodoro Technique The Pomodoro Technique is a proven time management method that alternates between focused work intervals, traditionally 25 minutes, and short breaks, typically 5 minutes. By structuring your study sessions in this way, you maintain concentration, reduce mental fatigue, and minimize the urge to procrastinate. Leverage peak productivity periods. Understand your natural sleep-wake cycle and schedule your challenging tasks during your peak productivity hours. 
For morning people, this may be the early morning, while night owls may prefer late evenings. Aligning your task difficulty with your energy levels makes studying feel easier and less daunting. Create a dedicated study environment. Choose a quiet, well-lit place free from distractions and designate it as your study space. Having a dedicated study environment signals to your brain that it's time to focus and reduces the temptation to engage in non-study related activities. Seek accountability. Share your goals and study plans with a friend, a family member or study partner. Regularly checking in on someone about your progress can keep you motivated and on track. Having someone else hold you accountable can provide the extra push you need to resist procrastination. Practice self-compassion. Perfectionism and the fear of failure can be significant drivers of procrastination. Recognize that mistakes are a natural part of the learning process. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small, and be kind to yourself. Self-compassion fosters a positive mindset and reduces the anxiety that often leads to procrastination. By implementing these strategies, you can not only overcome procrastination, but also develop effective study habits, increase your productivity, and create a more positive and fulfilling learning experience. Remember, defeating procrastination is a skill that takes practice. So be patient with yourself and keep refining your approach until you find out what works best for you. In the realm of effective learning, we embark on a journey that extends beyond the walls of the classroom and into the broader tapestry of life. As we apply these principles in academic settings, we build a solid foundation for success, not just in terms of grades, but in developing a lifelong love for learning. In the professional world, the principles of effective learning become even more critical. The ability to learn, adapt, and grow is essential in a fast-paced, ever-changing job market. By embracing continuous learning, seeking challenges, networking, and seeking feedback, individuals can position themselves for career advancement and remain competitive in their fields. Beyond the confines of formal education and professional development, there lies the vast and enriching realm of lifelong learning. It is a journey of personal fulfillment, curiosity, and the continuous expansion of our knowledge and understanding the world. Embracing curiosity as our compass, we can explore endless subjects from art and history to science and technology. Setting personal learning goals provides direction and motivation, while utilizing the wealth of resources available to us in the digital age and beyond opens a limitless world of learning opportunities. Lifelong learning is not just about accumulating knowledge. It's about weaving that knowledge into the fabric of our lives, reflecting on what we've learned and considering its application to our personal experiences. Beliefs and goals deepens our understanding and leads to a personal growth and transformation. Sharing our knowledge with others through writing, mentoring or engaging in discussions not only solidifies our understanding, but also enriches the lives of others. It fosters a culture of learning and curiosity in our communities, creating a virtuous cycle of knowledge and exchange and intellectual growth. Cultivating resilience and adaptability is essential on the path of lifelong learning. Challenges and setbacks are inevitable, but it's our willingness to persevere and adapt that ultimately defines our growth. Embracing challenges as opportunities for growth and remaining flexible in our learning strategies allows us to navigate the complexities of lifelong learning successfully. Lifelong learning is a journey with no fixed destination a continuous path of discovery that enhances our lives, broadens our perspectives, and connects us more deeply to the world around us. By embracing our principles of effective learning, we equip ourselves with the tools to navigate this journey, continually growing, evolving, and embracing the joy of discovery at every turn. Remember, the most profound journeys are those that last a lifetime, and lifelong learning is indeed a journey that extends far beyond the boundaries of the classroom and into the vastness of our lives. As we reach the conclusion of our exploration of effective learning, it is an opportune moment to reflect upon the comprehensive journey we've undertaken. From unraveling the essence of learning to immersing ourselves in the plethora of strategies that enhance it, and then meticulously applying these principles across diverse domains of our lives, we have navigated a vast expanse of knowledge and profound insights. Our expedition commenced with defining learning thereby laying the groundwork for an in-depth inquiry into the factors that make learning truly effective. We meticulously dissected the components of effective learning, placing emphasis on the vital role of active engagement, dedicated practice, and repetition. 
and the indispensable role of feedback loops in shaping our learning experiences. Furthermore, we delved into the intricate psychological underpinnings of learning, unveiling the fundamental significance of cognitive load theory, the transformative potential of adopting a growth mindset, and the profound influence of motivation and emotion on our capacity to learn. Armed with these valuable insights, we then embarked on a voyage of discovering practical strategies that could be effectively harnessed to supercharge our learning endeavours. We engaged in discussions about the pivotal importance of active learning techniques, explored the instrumental role of technology in modern education, and underscored the necessity of cultivating a conducive learning environment. Recognising that challenges are an inherent part of the learning process, we confronted them head-on, offering practical strategies for identified personal learning styles, effectively managing information overload, and skillfully overcoming procrastination, each a crucial step in our quest to become more effective learners. Subsequently, we expanded our discourse to encompass the practical applications of these principles, highlighting their undeniable relevance in academic settings, professional development initiatives, and the broader context of lifelong learning. And as we approach the end of the journey, I urge you to embrace the opportunity to act upon what you've learned, diligently implementing the strategies that resonate with you. Remember, the path to becoming an effective learner is an ongoing pursuit, replete with boundless opportunities for growth, discovery, and personal transformation. The strategies or insights we have shared are invaluable tools at your disposal, ready to be applied, tested, and refined as you navigate your quest for knowledge and skill acquisition. It is imperative to acknowledge that challenges and setbacks are an integral part of the learning process. Rather than perceiving them as indicators of failure, view them as opportunities for growth and advancement. Embrace challenges with a growth mindset, allowing them to serve as catalysts that propel you forward on your learning journey. It is essential to recognize that effective learning is a deeply personal endeavor, unique to each individual. As you continue on your path, embrace the challenges, celebrate your milestones, and remain steadfast in your pursuit of new horizons of knowledge and understanding. If you found this video helpful and informative, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and notification bell that'll let you know every time a new video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, I'll see you next time.